Amadeo Avogadro lived in Italy, and his work means an awful lot to chemistry. Amadeo Avogadro may be dead, but we all should remember what he said. Equal volumes of gases at the same temp and pressure have the same number of molecules. Amadeo Avogadro, that's his hypothesis. You got two balloons filled with different gases. Equal volumes, but they both have different masses. Well, welcome to my classroom. This is my classroom, not necessarily my lab. And do we have a nice candle holder here for this demo? We have some grape juice. Don't get excited. Don't whine about it. We could have put it in this cup, but then I have to drink it periodically. So this is what I use in my AP class, probably the second or the third day to see who's really sophisticated mathematically. It can also be done in an honors class after you've covered the mole concept. You want to find out who really knows some math and some chemistry and can put it all together. There's a quote up here by George Gilbert. Don't tell them what is going to happen. Treat it as an experiment. So you shouldn't tell the students up front what's going to happen with the demonstration and give the whole thing away. Treat it as an experiment. Okay, that's a good way to do it. There's some other things to consider when doing demonstrations. Um, one of them that comes to mind is, in my school, it has to be cheap. They want the stuff to be as inexpensive as possible. Second, it has to be easy to set up. I don't have a lot of time between classes. I need to set it up. So I tend to keep each particular demo in a box, labeled in the shelf by each chapter. It helped. Safety, this has got to be safe. Well, the pie is fairly safe, although we do have to replace it every year, especially look at the expiration date. Um, shelf life is important to chemicals. You need to know their shelf life. You might even put a date when you made up the chemicals. And you might even write on the label, on the chemicals, how much ingredients go in there so you don't have to go look it up each time. Disposal is also important. You might put that in the box with the demo that you're putting away. Something else I consider important with demonstrations is the fact that the students actually ought to be thinking about what you're doing. You should give them questions on your test or quiz on the demonstration itself. Ask them a question. For example, what was the purpose of the pie demonstration? Man, if they were absent, it's their problem. You said you missed work, you don't get paid that day. Here, I'm not going to dock your pay, but you just lost points on that question. Being here in class, classroom time is important. Um, you can also give them response sheets to fill in, small pieces of paper to fill in uh, some questions about the demo, or to take some notes and work out a problem on the demonstration so they're actually thinking about what's going on. Otherwise, kids can lean back and just say, hey, it's a good time, he's going to do a little show for me. No, you want them to think about what's going on. OK, so here's how I do it in my AP class. I set it up and I say, I've got a pie here. This pie, I believe, has about one mole's worth of sugar, OK? If I cut this pie in half, I've got a half a mole of sugar. If I cut this pie in half again, I've got a fourth of a mole of sugar. If I cut this pie in half again, and it's pecan pie, because I like pecan pie. I've got an eighth of a mole of sugar. OK, and I'm going to put it on my plate here. And this is a periodic table placemat. That way I get all my essential elements in one meal. Thank you. And I'm going to uh, ask you the question now, how many cuts do I have to make to this pie until I get one molecule of sugar? And then I'd have my kids figure it out. Keep in mind, the kids in my AP class were not very nice kids. They tended to carry their calculators with them. And you probably would need a calculator for this one. And this is scary. Some of those kids I had were so bright that within 15 seconds in just about every class, some kid would come up with the answer. He'd have his Texas instrument 932 out so fast it would knock your socks off. And he or she would have figured out the answer. Notice we're not getting any in here today. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a number of ways to do that. 
and there's a small hint here, do to the x equals Avogadro's number. That's basically the question I'm asking you, to solve for x. And really to solve for x, you need to use logarithms in this case. That's the way that most of my kids would solve it. Now, most of them didn't get it, but I'm, I'm serious. They could get it in under 15 seconds, about one per each class, by solving this equation. Me, the first time I did it, I thought about it for about five minutes, and then I go, you know, I can put Avogadro's number in my calculator and then count the number of times I divide by two until I get to one. <laughs> That's what I did. I printed that out right here. I don't know, it's not important, but I printed that out right here. You could see, you could do that. <laughs> I mean, and you gotta, you gotta keep count though. That's the dangerous part. You're gonna miss halfway through and you're nailed. And uh, so, anybody come with a number yet? I don't expect you to, by the way, because who's gonna carry calculator? It's 79. All right, so that's kind of neat. 79 times. You can also write a little algorithm for your TI and put that in and solve it that way in your, in your calculator. So the bottom line is, this is a very effective demonstration for finding out who's really bright in your class, in an honors class or an AP class. Um, it's not an easy problem to solve because you need to know some logarithms. And uh, well, it's just really, if you know the logarithms, it's as easy as rolling off the log to get the answer for this.